Question for Coach. It seems like we've asked you this before, where you had one of these games where you played pretty well, but there's those two or three moments where it goes the other way. Do you evaluate that? Yeah, oh, you know, and, and you said it. We, we've talked about this, you know, before. Uh, you don't know when those big moments are going to arise, and you don't know if those moments are going to be the ones that change the game. And, um, you know, when those moments arose, you know, we, we had some opportunities to, to change the momentum of the game, and we, we let it slip through our fingers, and then – they capitalized uh, on the moments when it came for them, and uh, that was the story of the game. What gives you confidence if you're going to fix this third and long situation that we've been talking about for so long? Yeah, I, yeah. here's the deal. We have, so on third and long, right, we were, what we were, it was three of ten on the day, right? One of the third downs was a third and one, so they converted, what, two? And we stopped him on five, so it was two or seven. You know, listen, we want to go seven for seven, right? Not five for seven. We had on one of them, we had an opportunity, uh, missed a sack, right? Didn't didn't run the contain correctly up front, so then he was able to push away from the missed sack. And you know, the the route concept, you know, if it gets that deep into the down. You know, has a chance to break away. If we make the sack, the, the route doesn't even open. If we get the contain, it'll be hard for him to find that route. Um, in every coverage, there are beaters, you know, and to stop the beaters, you know, whether it's, hey, the pressure has to help the coverage in that instance. And uh, on that one, we missed it. Um, on the other one that we gave up, you know, we played main coverage and we got to win our one on ones. Um, both from a pass rush standpoint and from uh, coverage. But um, I know we're all hurting from last year. You know, if last year, you know, if we started from scratch this year, I don't think people would think we have a third and long issue. I know the first drive of the first game, you know, butterflies and some, some things there. Um, but I think we were humming pretty good. Um, but again, there were plays to capitalize on. And, uh, you know, we get them to, to fourth and one there. We, we, no matter what, we can't jump off sides. We know that. that that's, that's football IQ. That's football one-on-one. Um, we get another chance, you know, on – Third and one, you know, when we lose the edge, you know, uh, matchup wise, it was a big body versus a little, but still, it doesn't matter. Those things, those matchups will happen. We know how to set those edges to get it turned back. We got a chance to have another negative play on that down if we do. <laughs> so, yes, we need to execute better. But was it a full systems failure? No. No, obviously, you have a lot of Georgia film, but to. Has Brock been able to give you guys any sort of insight whatsoever into Georgia's offense that maybe you can't see on film? No, I and, and listen, he, he's got plenty to deal with, you know, for on his side from a game plan. I, I try to uh, not put that on, on the guys. They, they've got to worry about what they've got to do. You know, we've we been playing these guys for a long time, um, and they're really good at their execution and they. So uh, we understand uh, the supreme challenge uh, that lies ahead. Uh, and, you know, time will tell. Right, like we've seen Carson Beck before, obviously, last year. Tough challenge for the secondary. How important is it for, for them to have a bounce back game and play even extra stick in them that Carson Beck does? Right. Uh, yeah, they will. It's, it's not just Carson Beck. It's a really good offensive line. It's talented, fast receivers, talented tight ends, running backs that will run through and by you. So, um, yes, uh, Carson directs the ship, and he is uh, as talented as a quarterback as there is in the country. You know, when, when 
he spins a football is his location. Uh, he's gonna throw and complete balls like that. That's just the reality of it, you know. And they've uh, they've been doing it as an offense uh, for a lot of years now. So, you know, to put that on the secondary and to say, hey, you guys have to play even stickier and you've got to be like, I don't think that's a fair deal. You know, I think we all have to play better. I have to make sure that, that we're in uh, calls that, that help guys at times, you know, and then uh, at other times, guys are going to have to win their one-on-ones. Um, and if they don't, that they bounce back. They don't let it get them down. They understand that's football. Uh, they understand that we're playing a really, really talented football team that are going to make plays, uh, and it's going to have to be a 60-minute football game. Right, man, just kind of answer this to an extent, but on the, on the coverage breakdowns, is it more mental than physical, and do you have to do anything to, to simplify? It, so it, uh, <laughs> there was a simple communication that they understand they have to make on every play. Um, there was a mental breakdown that you know, a, you know, the player hasn't made that mistake in a long, long time. And you know, sometimes you know what guys have to do is they have to not let the feel and the emotion of the game get them. In that, if they feel like it's slipping away, okay, now I have to do too much. I have to do something beyond me. We talked about that on Thursday or Wednesday last week when somebody asked and it's, hey, listen, it's just doing our job plus, but it starts with my job. It doesn't say, hey, I'm going to do plus and negate my job. Like, I, you know, that's not going to win ball games. Um, and so if we have to do our job first, technically sound, put our eyes in the right spot, communicate in the right way, um, and for a large majority of the game, we did that. But on those plays, and there are times in football that you miss it, and people don't realize that we had a breakdown because they went the other way, because there was a sack, whatever the case may be, right? And so it's kind of swept under the rug, you know, from an outside perspective, not inside the building, but, you know, and so those are things that we, we have to talk about and deal with on a weekly basis when it becomes a problem is that when that failure occurs and it leads to a big play, um, it leads to something that can uh, really affect the outcome of the ball game, there's a problem. Brad, you, Coach Stoops talked about maybe uh, that the call changed on one of a couple of the plays or maybe one of them when the communication after it had went off in the headset. Is that more of getting used to that headset calls or is it more discipline of making sure you're checking signals? What is that for those players on an instance like that? Yeah, I think that that's on, that's on player and that's on coach, right? That's on myself, you know, not harping on it enough in practice and maybe even myself in practice getting, you know, overly comfortable that it's a clean communication because there's, you know, crowd noise, not a practice, right? Um, the uh, emotion of a game, you know, my pitch could potentially change in a microphone, you know, in a crucial situation, like I'm a little bit more hurried or rushed, or maybe it comes out a little blurred, you know, cause I'm trying to, to get it. And I just assume he's got what I said. Uh, but, you know, it's now, it's, it's a part of the common procedure that, hey, listen, you can't just trust what you hear, you know, that's to confirm what you see. Okay, you know. folks, need to uh, uh, go ahead and uh, get done, get to our program here.